Busy day in the DMV, always a busy day in D.C. Time now for your Monday morning quarterback's guest panel. Another step in the federal cases against Donald Trump with his next hearing scheduled today, this morning. An AI once recreated his voice for a DeSantis ad. We get into AI in the political landscape with a couple of heavyweights this morning. Joining me now, today's guests, Yasmin Raji and Mark Lauder. Good to see both of you this morning. Uh, Yasmin worked for the Biden administration. Mark worked for the Trump administration. You guys are perfect to talk about this today. Uh, I do want to talk, first of all, about the hearing and we have another one this morning when it comes to the former president. Mark, you you were a spokesperson for uh, President Trump, for Vice President Pence. Uh, when it comes to this, how would you play this? What's happening behind the scenes right now with the multiple investigations that are happening? Well, as you see, the, the mugshot that was released over the weekend, late last week, of the former president has driven to his largest fundraising day uh, this cycle, uh, more than $7 million. So I think the American people see that there's a two systems of justice out there. They see that everything is being thrown at uh, former President Donald Trump, while investigations into the Biden family and all of those others are pretty much just brushed under the rug. So he'll continue to use this. And from a legal standpoint, they'll seek to delay these trials and most of these trials, I would say, are, are not going to happen before the, uh, next year's election. Yeah, as I'm curious, your take on this and, and the stance now moving forward as we have obviously four coming up. We'll find out a little bit more about them in a few hours today here in D.C. Uh, but what's your take? Yeah, you know, I think uh, what uh, my co-panelist said is exactly right, which is the only legal strategy the Trump team has is to delay, delay, delay. And all they're counting on uh, is a hope that they delay, that Donald Trump wins the next election, and that he focuses on his top priority, which is pardoning himself. And I think where I disagree with my co-panelists is the American people, I think, are pretty clear, whether they're Republicans, independents, or Democrats, that their priority is not Donald Trump focusing on himself. Their focus is themselves and their livelihoods and having a president who is going to be able to focus on them. And that's why at Swing Left, the organization that I run, we are laser focused on reelecting President Biden. So I want to ask you, I'll stick with you, Yasmin, for a quick follow up there. Obviously, President Trump is going to get the attention, whether or not he's paying for that attention or not, just because it's part of the news cycle with all of these events that are going on right now. So how do Democrats counter that then? And if you want to to gain the popularity uh, and gain the votes, essentially, when the former president is getting so much free publicity. You know, Donald Trump is great at the publicity game. What he is not great at is actually getting things done for the American people. And what we've seen that President Biden has done time after time is actually make advances, advances for the economy, advances for our environment. He's gotten so much done. And I think the biggest focus that Democrats need to be focused, need to be uh, centered on right now is telling the story of all of those advances for folks who are busy, who don't watch the news every day, who are, you know, focused on their jobs and their families to know about all of that progress. And most Americans want to know about that progress, not about the clown show that is Donald Trump year after year. Yeah, the messaging is certainly so important. Mark, I'm curious your, your response to that. But also, Mark, you know, you mentioned the fact so much money was made almost immediately off of the mugshot. The support is there financially, but does that support also convey to the ballot box? Oh, absolutely. Look, I mean, and I'll have this debate with my co-panelists every single day. People are paying attention. They can't afford groceries. They can't afford gas prices. Our southern border is uh, being overrun. Democrat-run cities are struggling under the weight of their so-called sanctuary rules. Crime is out of control. All of those things happened on Joe Biden's watch. He owns them all. And so we'll have that debate because I think at the end of the day, people are going to say, look, Trump faces charges. Biden should be facing charges. Who's going to lower my gas prices? Who's going to deal with the out of control inflation? And they know it's not Joe Biden. He caused this problem in the first place. I want, we'll talk much more about the election as we get closer and closer yeah. to it. Uh, Yasmin, I want to switch gears right now. I want to talk about AI. We've, we talk about it in despite every other uh, story that we present when it comes to education, schools, back to school right now. Uh, uh, whether it's a college level or a younger level. What about in politics? What about when it comes to the ads now? Uh, how, how do you see that being used for 2024 in either a, a good or in a negative way? Yeah, there is no question that AI is going to have a huge impact on our politics, and it's going to be both good and bad. You know, it is just like any other technological advance. It's a tool that will be used uh, to strengthen our politics. It'll also be used uh, to undermine it. But something that we've seen with every technological advance, whether it's social media or now AI, 
is that the fundamentals of politics don't change. And the fundamentals are we've got to be able to reach voters face to face, person to person. And that's why at Swing Left, the organization that I run, our volunteers are laser focused on doing that work because they know if they're not out knocking on doors starting now, making those calls starting now, we're not going to be able to reach enough voters. Um, so technological advances aside, the fundamentals never change. The fundamentals need to be there. And ideally, you are meeting everybody face to face. Uh, in this modern era, though, it seems like whatever message you can blast across is going to at least get people talking. Mark, you've run the campaigns at the highest level. How do you use AI now or how would you use it uh, in an upcoming campaign? Well, I think, there, as you pointed out, and even my pa uh, co-panelists agreed, there are good and bad. And I think that the ability to create ads, the, the ability to tailor messages to specific audiences is very good. But where we're already starting to see campaigns who are basically using AI to cre create their opponent's voice and create ads that in that voice that don't say something that they've actually ever said, that's very dangerous. And I think we're entering a very dangerous part uh, here in politics if this is used for uh, for bad purposes. It could be used to mislead people on election day. And I think that's a real danger if the, the campaigns themselves don't show any kind of self-control and just do whatever it takes to win. And I think that's an argument that will be accepted by uh, everybody on either side of the aisle right now as far as the potential dangers down the road and, and misrepresenting one person uh, to try to use it to your advantage. Great to talk to both of you this morning. Yasmin, Mark, uh, I appreciate it. We'll talk to you again soon. Uh, obviously, we have many more opportunities before the election in 2024. Hope you have a fantastic day. We'll see you soon. You too. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, let's turn.